<sighs> Hello there, everybody. It's Sabah and I2AK Nightmare, and um, I'm going to apologize immediately for the lack of a video yesterday, and I'm also going to apologize again that this video is also going to be probably a little bit shorter, too. So, let me explain a couple things, because I'm pretty sure people, some people were kind of confused as to why there wasn't a video yesterday. So, um, first thing, my laptop died. And by died, I mean it gave the infamous blue screen of death and then ceased to function completely. So, naturally, I was having a heart attack over the past three or four days. About three days, really, I think. Because I had figured I had pretty much lost everything that I had. Pretty much all the files, everything. So, like, okay, also the laptop wouldn't even turn on anymore. So it was, you know, after years of service, it finally just died. So, having myself a freaking heart attack, I got in some technological help when we took out the hard drive. Well, I figured, well, if, if anything, hopefully all the files are still on the hard drive. Well, after we got a nice little, uh, what the hell's in compress, in comp it's one of those things that you cover the hard drive with and you're really able to plug it in other things. So, we turned that old laptop's hard drive into an external hard drive. And then we hooked it up to the the new gaming computer that we all went, that we all worked for. And all the file, everything was corrupted. So I had to pull a few strings and I went ahead and, well not so much pull a few strings, I had to open up the command prompt. And long story short, all of the files are now safe, everything is fine. The only major issue is that I'm going to have to go through Umineko episode 5 again, which thankfully we just started on that, so there's the there's some good news there but this is my first time going to attempt to fully actually record on you know this gaming computer with fate stay night so hopefully it turns out pretty good um and i'm also going to apologize this video is very it's not it's not as lengthy as it is my most of my videos are honestly but uh, let's just say the past few days have been incredibly stressful hopefully i can get back into making or so going with my schedule that I have so there will be five though again we will continue doing the five videos thing so there will also be a video Wednesday anyway oh shit I just realized I got to download a freaking editor also one more thing before we actually get started oh I'll, I'll probably have to put a little timestamp here to we can skip all this but I'm thinking about making a discord server for you guys what, what does that mean? I'm, um, it's still kind of work in progress, honestly. It, the idea just kind of came to me. But what I was thinking is we can make a Discord server where you guys can discuss things, or maybe we can all just talk together. And what would this Discord have? I'm probably going to make several, you know, groups specific for each Let's Play that I do. So there would be one for Fate Stay Night, one for Umineko, one for Higurashi, and one for pretty much a lot of the games that I'll be currently doing on Let's Plays as well as Let's Reads. If you guys are up to that idea, I mean. But that's just a thought that I had anyway. Let's finally get back into this. We won't have that much time anyway to continue, but or we won't have that much time. These past few days have just been really, really bad. It'd be pointless, so I guess I won't ask. Yeah, I made the mistake of asking him, so... No. It'll be dangerous to talk about this. Issei's living at the Ryudo Temple. If he gets suspicious of the strange woman, Issei might get curious and do something. And, if that woman happens to be a master, Issei would be in danger. And this is it for today. I'll... I'll call it good since I found out Issei's unrelated to the Holy Grail War. Ah, so Sakura wasn't at school? That's not good. Is she okay? Hmm. I'm at a loss for words. Being confronted with the problem I'd forgotten. Yeah, sure. I mean, the guy who already killed me, but sure, let's do that. Issei pushes me out of the student council room. All the while, thoughts of Sakura's absence and what Shinji may have done after losing Ryder twirl around in my head.
Interlude. Oh. We got ourselves another interlude. Cool. It is a sound like hitting steel. He arrives at the place, breathing heavily. His footsteps are loud and their rhythm is unsettled. He leaves the door open and staggers forward as if pulled by his falling body. He looks around. The church is empty, with the morning service already over. The only light is the sunlight coming in from overhead. The silence creates a solemn atmosphere, and the stopped space creates a clear silence. He has like a heresy in it all. Um, Shinji? No, that is not accurate. To say he arrived is not correct. His ragged breathing, his unfocused eyes, his shaking limbs are like those of someone running away. He has come here to find shelter. Now, everything makes sense. His desperation is like that of prey being chased by a hound. He strains his body that's about to fall onto the ground. When did he appear? He looks with bloodshot eyes at the priest before the altar and he says something. The priest frowns. He did not completely understand the boy, but it seems he is asking for help. He wants protection. A master that has lost his servant may ask for protection under the condition that he withdraw from the war. The place of retreat, the last sanctuary, is this church. And the master of this place is the priest called Kotomi Naikide. <clears throat> the boy reacts like fire to the quiet voice. I'm sure Ilya would have no problem killing you. The priest does not answer and only looks at the intruder, as if to peer within his skin, bones, and meat. キミは今回一人目の放棄者であり、我が教会始まって以来の使用者だ。管理者として、ここに根付いた父に代わり、定調にもてなそう。え、なんだよ。リタイアしたのは僕だけだっていうのか。くそ、みっともない。こんなこと
Oh no. He looks down at the loser and says so with a kind voice. He cannot understand the priest's words. The priest in black has a friendly smile on his face. Oh no. Oh god, no. The priest offers a new salvation as if suppressing his joy. School's over. It must be because of what happened yesterday. The students are not allowed to stay at school for any reason. There's still time until the sun sets. I'll... Hmm? Oh. Um... I'm worried about soccer. I'll go to the Matau household. I feel like if I go to her house, then I have this feeling that Shinji will have this new servant, which I'm pretty sure we know who it is, and I'll probably get killed rather quickly. But I'm also worried about Sakura, and... <sighs> Meat's on sale today, I'll make a huge... <laughs> <sighs> um, sorry, Sakura. I should hurry. I'll go get my violent partner before her relationship with Issei becomes a terrible one. <laughs> then, I'm knocked out after returning to Class 2A after I've searched all over the place. This is getting stupid. I can contact Tosca over the phone after I get home. I check the student directory as soon as I get home and call Tosca. Ring, ring. She picks up after dozens of rings and right when I was about to give up. The voice is definitely Tosca's. Why'd you mistake me for Archer? I don't know if she's relieved or disappointed. I can't grasp her reaction too well over the phone. I don't have any more business, but there's something I'm curious about. I can feel Tosca's bewilderment over the phone. After a brief silence... Really? She answers in a cold voice and hangs up the phone. Okay... Dinner ends before I realize it. I came home, trained with Saber in the dojo, then Fujine came home and I made dinner. We ate it together and now it's already past eight. Saber we're drinking the after meal tea now. I can't really go for a good freaking cup of tea after what's happened lately. 
It's good that Fujine and Saber are getting along. I don't want to interrupt, so I'll quietly drink tea and rest my body that is tired from training with Saber. Okay. ですがま、結果がいいので黙認することにしました。確かに白は自分に合った戦法を身につけた方がいい。体は塔に出来上がっているのですから、あとは自身をうまく動かす思考を組み込むだけです。は、セーバーちゃんは勝ってるじゃない
憧れているその正義の味方にうんまあそうだけど It's embarrassing if she says superhero outright So what do you think? What do you think? I realized at that moment, there's no reason. Emi Ashiro has admired superheroes since he was a child. I kept on running so that I could be of help to people, so that I could help people who are sad. That does not change even now. But the reason behind it. Why did I try to be of help to people? I'll make your dream. That's the answer. That was the end of the person that meant everything to me. He died peacefully because of a simple statement I made. I wanted to protect that trust he had in me, even after he died, so that he would be able to rest in peace. But is that really the right reason? Shiro. I hear my name and get a hold of myself. Yeah, but I... Driven by an unknown uneasiness, I get up. I leave the living room as if running away from something. No, not as if. I did run away. It was a natural question, but I was scared something might be revealed if Saber stared at me like that. An uneasiness that I don't understand myself. A shapeless fear. An attacking nausea. I hurry to my room bearing the headache. Fujine went home saying that she had work to do tonight. Saber is sleeping in the next room like yesterday. I can't sleep tonight either, so I stare into the darkness. It's not that I can't sleep because I'm conscious of Saber. Why do you try to be a superhero? It's because of those words. That question is still in my brain. She asked me why, and I answered, because I admire them. It's obvious why I ran away right then. Because if she had asked me why I admired them, I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer. No, I have an answer. But I'm unconsciously restraining myself from ever saying it. Why ask that now? I was just desperate to be like Kiritsugu when I was a child. I admired superheroes because there was an ideal I could not make come true. That should be the cause. The true form of the ideal I have. No, the ideal I've had since ten years ago. I glared into the sky, thinking that if I could save someone, it would be a lie unless I could save everything else. Oh, whoops. It would be a lie unless I could save everything. Sorry. But which one is the lie? The ideal called a superhero that I've admired. The older I get, the more Emi Ashiro strays from the ideal. The ignorant child that did not know of limits has learned of limits through knowledge. What cannot be saved cannot be saved. A miracle is something too big for humans. But I believed I could be like Kiritsugu when I grew older. But all I obtained was the wisdom to conclude that an ideal is just an ideal. All I can do are remedial measures. Even though I've been attacked with the fact that it's meaningless, I've continued to do whatever I could. Thinking that it's good enough if one person is saved by my actions. Even though my objective is to save as many lives as I can, I've lost a lot of things on the way. But I continued so that I wouldn't lose. Even if I'm battered by reality, I can keep standing if I don't accept the loss, even if I'm only bluffing. That ideal, the ideal not to hurt anyone, is beautiful. I'll make your dream. Yes, I just thought that. If nobody was going to do it, I would inherit his dream myself. That's why I must become a superhero. I have to succeed Kiritsugu and protect what he admired. If I can create no victims, and if everyone can keep living peacefully, how good would it...
I desperately reject the words that come to my mind. He told me to drown in my ideals and die, but those words are ominous as if correctly predicting Emiyashiro's end. Yeah, that's not dark and devious at all, my dear stray dead. And I see his dream. The memory of the man who was set up as a hero. A story of a knight who was understood by no one. It was a simple story. In short, there was something wrong with him. He had some power, and he had some ambition. But he used his powers at the wrong places from beginning to end, and he died. It's only natural. Power exists to grant your own wishes. Compassion does no good for others. Kirei says so often, but everything is balanced because everything you do comes back to you. One gets energy because actions circle around to create more energy. But not having that means never being replenished. For example, if one lives for others and not oneself, I'm sure one would run out of power right away. If there were such a thing as disposable money, that's what it would be like. It, it'd be used by strangers and it'd only disappear after it's used. It's easy to take advantage of it, in that it'd be used is already given. That's why in the end, he saw many betrayals, and his life was ended by someone he saved. It just makes me mad. I want to question him. Why? He worked hard, put in great effort even though he's an ordinary human being, and he managed a miracle with his own blood. And his compensation was betrayal and death. It's not even a joke. But he died satisfied. I have no intention of commenting on, on someone's life, but... I can never accept that one thing. That's my impression of the dream I've seen a few times now. I usually wake up here, but it seems the dream continues today. He is standing in hell. It is a scene of some natural disaster, not the result of human conflict. <laughs> He weaves the words of contract. After that, he changed as though possessed by something and saved people who could not normally be saved. Oh, so this must be how he became a heroic spirit. Seeing it this way, it's nothing much. I bet the people he saved were not even in the hundreds. He cannot even be called a hero with such a number, nor would he be promoted to a heroic spirit. But the number isn't important. The qualification of a hero, one who surpasses humans, is to be able to save those that are fated to die. It is an alteration of fate. It does not matter if he does not have power as a hero, as long as he has averted a disaster that cannot be changed, however small in scope. No. The world would obtain a heroic spirit in compensation for the miracle. He became a hero and saved those that could not have been saved. As a result, he became a heroic spirit after he died, and he is now repeating what he was doing before he died. Being a servant. I guess, compensation for a miracle is to become a convenient disposable tool that will fight for others even after one dies. Heroic Spirits Superior spirits chosen from amongst humans, the guardians of humanity. But they are not ones with free will like the servants. Heroic spirits are guardians of humanity. Guardians do not have a free will, and they are treated as powers. They are called forth to protect the world only when a factor appears that could destroy it. They are weapons that destroy these factors. The servant system is a summoning ritual that takes advantage of these guardians. Okay, we already know this. The guardians are summoned into every age, eliminate the offending factor, and then disappear from this world. I would hate to be like that, but he must have been prepared to take on that role. No, he might have even wished for it. That it would be perfect if he could save people even after he died. Even though he did not have the power to save them when he was alive, he must have believed he could avert every tragedy if he became a heroic spirit. With that in mind, he made a contract with the world to give up his body after his death, and he saved a hundred people. Believing that, he would be able to save tens of thousands of people afterwards. How stupid of him. That cannot be. Because for a heroic spirit to be called upon, the place would already have to be a place of death. Heroic spirits are summoned only into hell. 
They appear only when the world is about to be destroyed by people. Humans are the ones that will perish from their own doings, so the process of destruction must always be the same. Jealousy, hatred, selfishness, desire. The man who loved people and tried to be of help to them was shown the same ugliness even after he died. He was called into such scenes and served his responsibility as a guardian. He killed. He killed and killed and killed and killed. He killed everyone that was around him when he was summoned to save humanity as a whole. I don't know how many times he repeated that, nor do I know how many times he will have to repeat it in the future. So there's only one thing I can say. He has been betrayed by many things, but in the end, he was betrayed by the only thing he believed in, his ideal. And that's where I'm going to end it, unfortunately. I'm gonna apologize again. But this is honestly all the time that I legitimately had. I'm gonna repeat it, the past few days have been very, very stressful. <laughs> Even so much that I've been kind of having little bits of a heart attack because I thought I had lost all the files and everything. Realistically, I'd say the only files that were really lost was my save data for Umineko, and that can be brought back up. I mean, we just started on Umineko episode 5 anyway, so... Okay. Again, I'm going to apologize for the length of this episode. I will try to make it up to you guys that much, I promise. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will definitely see you guys in the next video.